Hello, I'm Anthony. Been having great fun over the past week or so, trying to tone match my Fender Twin Amp with UA Aux, uh, with, with plugins, basically. In part one of this little mini-series, I'll put a link above uh, to, to what I was doing last time. I basically come up with a configuration of a compressor, uh, sorry, a compressor, a Steinberg frequency, a bias FX, and a little bit of processing with a multiband imager to get as close as I possibly could with the first lick, which you've heard that often enough, don't need to hear it again. The second lick that I've recorded uh, is down at the bottom end of the guitar. So this is an arpeggiated C chord with then a strummed E major. So that's the amped version. Let's hear that dry version through the presets that we had last time when we were doing all the processing up around the 12th fret lick. Now the first problem that we've got is a clear massive volume disparity between those things. Now as you can see Insight's currently at the top of the chain so it's going to analyse the difference between the dry and, and amped tracks before any processing gets done. <clears throat> and as you can see, they're very well volume matched. The problem comes when you drop insight to the bottom of the chain. I mean, you can hear an egregious difference in volume. It's, it's well, as you'll see very shortly, it's big. that four or five db difference obviously every change that i make is going to take some of that tone equality away from the 12th fret lick but i'm trying to get something approaching a one size fits all i want this to be a usable preset regardless of i can't say well you know i'm going to change the preset because i want to go above the eighth fret that's ridiculous the first thing that i identified was a pretty serious problem with the compressor because I'd left it on more or less stock settings just to add a little bit of compression to the lick that I thought was important. But by leaving the auto gain on, it's it's giving a large part of that massive boost is coming from the auto gain. And so I've made two changes on the compressor front. The first, first thing is to do with the loudness range. You can see that I've got quite a big disparity between the loudnesses again. So I wanted to increase my ratio. But I also wanted to take auto gain off just to give me a bit more control over the compression levels. And so the new values that we've got basically do those things. So let's see what difference that makes to the loudness. This is just one change of multiple, but hopefully we should get a little bit closer than the four and a half we currently are. Okay, much better, down to 2 dB, so I've nearly halved that problem. Now I'm not gonna do this backwards and forwards in this episode too much because it'll just get tedious, but I do need to keep going back to my original lick as well, just to make sure I've not ruined anything over there. I just basically ask you to take that on trust and we'll have a comparison at the end once I've dialed in uh, the changes that I'm, I'm gonna to make today. Next thing we need to do is have a look at frequency. So this is the curve that we had after processing the 12th fret lick. Um, but we're still listening to the, uh, the C and the E chord here. We'll just have a look at the, the graph as these two chords play. So you can see the dry track is really dominant around the 2K region, but actually because we've got this 2 dB boost everywhere, it's a little bit difficult to keep track of. So I'm basically just dialing down a little bit of pretty much everything I did last time. And you can see I've just pulled those uh, slopes down a little bit, moved it out of the way to make room for this 500 hertz scoop. The signal that's going through the fender amp is just kinder in this mud region. It's just superior and there's too much of that on the DI signal. So that's the most important thing to pull away. But we obviously don't want to lose any of the other stuff as well. So subtle changes to the frequency curve. Let's see what that's done to the graph. Still a little bit out of control, a little bit unruly. 
slowly and my loudness is uh, really pretty good now. But I think it's important at this point to actually do a comparison between the two new tracks. So amped first and then I'll switch to dry. clearly those uh, those high frequencies everything above one and a half K basically it's just a, still a little bit too hot I've made enough changes at this point that I just want to have a quick uh, comparison back at the original lick overly bright isn't it? I need to tame some of them. Let's go back to the new lick and carry on working over here. Oh, it really annoys me when Comparison Channel does that. Grr. Okay next change to make is with Bias FX and this is one of the easiest places that we can do an overall control on the treble but the comparison of both of those tracks was telling me that I was starting to lose some of the definition with the bass as well. I've pulled those levels down in frequency and that's getting me that's got me level matched but it was feeling a little bit weak so here we have like a seven six nine kind of spread on the EQ and now I've boosted the bass a little bit and pulled the treble down a tiny bit and now let's have a listen to those two So everything I've done today has been a compromise because I've taken steps away from the, the 12 fret comparison that I've done. But it's got to take account of brand new frequencies, completely new demands that are being placed. And so we're now attempting to reach a more fret board wide compromise. So I've listened to the entire uh, lick, amped first and then dry, primarily for tone, but I'm also keeping an eye on the levels to make sure they're not too far out. Both licks are sounding fairly equivalent. I can always tell the difference between the amps. I'm kind of sick of saying so. It's a Fender amp. It's going to beat any uh, set of plugins you can come up against. But it's not bad. I've been using this DI sound for the past few days perfectly happily. And for the vast majority of the time, I'm not even aware that I'm not using an amp anymore. So it's doing that job. Now I've just got to do a little bit more of that fine tuning, iron out some of these wrinkles, but really this is getting me very close now to an overall usable tone. Hope you found that useful. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button. Thanks very much for watching.